Hello, my name's Kelly and I live with my family in Birmingham. And I'm lots of collecting bones and interesting stuff like science and all that. Jay just not playing Barbies. <laughs> Sam just likes doing a hair, 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 clips, clips, clips. In her house, she'll have mirror, 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 after mirror. Lauren likes smashing and hitting people with toys. <laughs> and Becca just likes screaming all day. Yeah. <laughs> if you're not in the air, she grabs the, grabs the cat and everything. <laughs> I don't care. Kelly, her three sisters and two half-sisters, live on this condemned housing estate in South Birmingham. With her mother Maxine, they've been surviving on benefits since her stepfather left seven months ago. This is Jade's bed. This is my bed. And this one's Becca's. And my dad made this from a kitchen door. It's just uh, nailed all the kitchen door to two uh, planks of wood and then put these to, to a side. It's just damp and horrible. And when you get into your bed, it's not very nice. It's like it's damp and everything. It's, it's just like rain clouds just came over and rained on your bed. We've been in this house almost three years now, and it's been a nightmare. Ever since we've lived here, well, we've had this trouble. I found this fungus. When I saw it, I was quite scared because it might grow loads over the wall. There's some down there at the bottom. It's going to start growing up here. I have to sleep with another fungus on my bed. <laughs> It's mid-November, their third winter in this house. The council planned to demolish it along with the rest of the estate in the coming year. With only a single gas fire to heat the whole house, it can't come soon enough for Kelly and her sisters. All I want is a new house and a new area just to get out of here. It's falling apart, really. Where's all the cool facts We haven't got that much money to to get food and go shopping and get loads of food so we can eat it all and the fridge is just bare. It's just horrible. <laughs> You're gonna give her that much? I'm freezing now. It's so cold in the mornings, we have to just stick the fire blasting. And it doesn't even make the living room really hot. But when we turn it on, you can't even feel it. What was that? What was that? It's only wee to me. Yeah. Yeah, but how do you fix it? Where's Becca's? Where's Becca's? Where's Becca's? I'm worried about my mum. All of us are. Because all the things she's going through. She's got six kids, three bedrooms and six kids. It's just horrible. We have to help our mum now because she uh, she hasn't got much things now. She's losing everything. She's, lo she's lost a brother. She's lost... Um, we've lost our granddad. We've got, lost our nan. So that's really sad for my mum because she's lost everyone. She's on tablets right now because of, of us. We're, we're just trying to help her a little bit round. <coughs> she's getting better, but she, she keeps going up on the tablets. She's going up and up. Yeah, it's really horrible because I'm worried that she smokes and every time she takes a puff, she's killing herself. If the doctor gives you tablets to take, that's OK. But if you have drugs, like, Cigarettes, then that's going to kill you, isn't it? 
I don't know, I put the kids through a hell of a lot. The past like 14 years, I've, had, I've suffered major depression. I've been silly in the past and thought, you know, I don't want to be here anymore. But if it weren't for the kids, then, you know, I wouldn't be here. You know, at one point, I wanted to be with my brother, who's dead. And it was the kids that brought me back. The kids that saved me, because sometimes I'd end up in a heap on the floor, um, just crying and crying, and all of them would just sit round me and look, huff, giving me a hug. Um, they were great, absolutely brilliant. Look forward to go to school because it's better at school. It's warm. It's got heaters and everything. I never saw it like this, always thought, you know, I could provide for them and everything could be hunky-dory, but it's not. The children at school, I always make sure that they don't have sandwiches, they stop for a hot dinner at school. Um, because I'm on benefits, they get a free dinner. When they come home, I can't afford to put another hot meal into their bodies because my shopping bill would be absolutely atrocious. So they don't get two hot meals a day, they only get one. Golden is at my school are not really big because we've got a little plate of chips, a little slice of pizza. You've got one pound for each to spend. You can only get three things. You're not allowed to get like, loads of things unless you've got your own money. My friends, they know what I'm going through and like, they'll try and help me out. Like, say I haven't got no tuck money, they'll give me some of their tuck. Or if I'm upset, they'll come up to me and give me a hug or something. And as these kids, I weren't listening to them, but they, it really got to me. I had these Airtech trainers, and I was, I, they had all these Rapport name trainers and all this Reebok stuff, and um, they went to me, oh, look what you're wearing. You, got name, you ain't got name trousers and all that, and name trainers. What? You ain't got nothing. And it just made me upset. And look, Jenny sometimes, she goes up to me and she goes, oh, you little tramp. Yeah. yeah, it's not nice, but I don't listen to them. In the past, I used to go into charity shops because it was the only way I could afford to sort of buy them clothes. But the older ones, if you mention charity shops to them, no, you know, it's embarrassing. Not the fact that they they don't want to wear the stuff, it's if anybody finds out at school, mm. then they get sort of penalised for it. So it's like, well, yeah, your mum's shops at charity shops, That's that's horrible, you know. The younger ones mostly have the clothes passed down from the older one. And my mum is a mobile hairdresser. She goes round to quite a few of the ladies and they send bags full of clothes. And I'm very lucky where that's concerned. My mum's mum, that's our nanny. She's always been there for my mum. She didn't even have the money to go shopping, but she had to. My nan then did have some money and uh, she got through. And now she says, um, this money's going to last me to, till Monday. Right. Right. Yeah. Every time my mum hasn't got no money, she just comes over and she goes, I have this. I've got some things for you. Ooh, things. goodies. In front of the lady, I go to on a Wednesday to her granddaughter's uh, clothes. Oh, they're all like party dresses, isn't they? Mm. They do well, don't they, off your ladies? Mm. Some they... I would have worn. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's nice. <laughs> Oh, that's will be Jade and Rebecca fighting over these, mm. I can see. Mm. I hope I am there for Maxine because I don't know where she'd be otherwise, really. I, I dread to think. I don't think she'd... Uh, I don't think she'd survive on her own. I suppose she'd have to because of the girls. It's nice. Oh, that'll fit me. Mm. Oh, that's a lovely Jade. The four girls have been absolutely marvellous. They really are. They've had hard times. They've really been through the mill. Yeah, but um, they all seem to just bounce back. Whatever life put, you know, throws at them, they all bounce back. Oh, this one's lovely, isn't it? Nice. Here's my shorts. Oh, <laughs> and I got these goofy shorts. <laughs> They've been well looked after and. She's been a good mum. I mean, I'll, I'll give her a juice. She's not sort of neglected them. She's been there for them. She's never... It's just the relationships that she's been in. 
My mum split up with my real dad and married Nigel, which is our stepdad. And then he had Becca and Lauren, which are our half-sisters, but we count them as our real sisters. And we count our dad as a real dad. It's like we've got two dads in the family. After months of separation, Maxine has decided to give her second husband another chance. Bus driver Nigel is returning home. Part of the deal that with me and Nigel coming back together um, was that he sought counselling um, due to he's, he gets very depressed and um, he's got a temper. Um, and I says that if in order to make this work, we've both got to sort of either go and see a counsellor together, but he's got to do something separate as well. I think she's really bright, to tell you the truth, to set me back on again. And I've caused her a lot of problems in the past. I have caused a lot of grief. I, um, I was in an accident and I lost my licence. Well, I got sent to prison for the accident. And in turn, can't work, lose my licence. So, I mean, that was that. There's nothing I could do about it. I knew it was coming. And I haven't worked for the past 14 months. Gone. And driving buses for a living is not a brilliant job, but, you know, it's a steady job that pays a wage every week, and that's mm -hmm. what I need for a family that I've got. I mean, it was going from, you know, not brilliant wage, but, you know, it was doing all right, then to nothing. You know, it'd knock anybody about that, would anybody? You know, there was a bit of guilt there. Well, there's a hell of a lot of guilt there. You know, I've just ruined everything for everybody. Oh, because of a stupid mistake. So that's good, then, it, Mum? Every sweet oil. My mum's getting back with my dad. I am pleased, but I'm not pleased. Because when he went, it weren't so good because my mum was just sitting there, cabbage to the telly, and, like, we'd ask her something and she would just break down in tears. Mm. And when he came back, she was just relieved. Come on, then. But I can't believe that my mum can go back. <laughs> I thought she was just going to stay on her own again. I don't care as long as Mum's happy. If she wants to stay with him, she'll stay with him. I don't care. What do you want? She won't come upstairs. I can't come down. Get back up from upstairs now. This is bedtime, not playtime. Do you want a smack to go with it? Now stop it. No, lie down, come on. Little horror. Thought it was too good to be true. <laughs> They're frightened to death of me. They're just so ashamed. Mm -hmm. You know, the things that I've done. I've bossed me knuckles. So many knuckles. My hands are ruined there. That's never right. Yeah. All my hands are all smashed up through being violent, through not being able to control my temper. Yeah. And now, I mean, I, I suppose I could do is seeing someone, you know, a counsellor, to calm me down. I mean, that's not how I want to be. When my dad was angry, I was really scared. I was shivering and everything. I couldn't get to sleep. And when my dad left, I was like, yes, yes, he's gone. But my mum says I can't live without him. Like, he says she, she can't just drop everything and drop her love and everything like that. So my mum says I can't just drop him and just go to somebody else. So she, when he, he came back, he said, well, I'll sort everything out, I'll sort my head out and get tablets and everything. I'm happy that he's going to sort everything out because it's really horrible when everything went wrong. He just takes it out and everything. Two weeks have passed. It's early December and Christmas is just three weeks away. So far, there is no sign of an early escape from their condemned house. She's been crying for most of the morning, but then I 
played with her for a bit. She had a little nap and she woke up. And then I played with her for a bit more. Kelly and Jada play with the Barbies. My mum's got shoppy for a bit. Hey, hey mummy. I'm not your mummy. My dad went to um, the doctor's to get some pills because uh, he drinks and he, get, he gets all dizzy and bags into things. And now he's on the pills, uh, it's gone all better because uh, he doesn't moan, he's really kind to us, he's uh, better than he was, and I think he's really doing well. <laughs> he plays with us, he makes us laugh, he jokes around with us. I like it. <laughs> now he's, he's, he's on the pills, I feel much better having a dad like that. It's not just a dad you're looking for, it's a coin dad, a dad that cares and um, a dad that helps you and, a, and not a dad that screams at you and hits you. So I think my dad's done really well and I'm grateful for a dad like that. <laughs> Nigel's temper troubles are now under control, but his return is causing different problems for Maxine. Just sorting these out to go and sell around the corner. It's a game shop. Yeah. Who um, sells and buys um, games off us when we get short of money, just to get us through today. Because Nigel's back, um, we're sort of everything's just gone to pot. Just one source of income coming in. It's it's you know um, mm. basically living on my money. Um, so everything's just running out quicker than normal because mm. um, normally I budget myself. But having Nigel back, it's just everything's gone up in the air. We've got to go up to the job centre in Northfield and um, tell them that we're back together. So fill out thousands of forms. You've got to do all the rigmarole again of claiming as a, a couple again. Hopefully they'll be kind to us and get our money sorted out as soon as possible, but mm. from past experiences I can't can't say that myself. Mum and Dad went to the DSS today, but I don't think they're getting anywhere with things. They're always in an awkward position, which is really, really <laughs> bad. But like they, they always try and it's 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 not nice being in that position because you, you can't get what you want and that. But we have to live with that. At the moment, it's really awkward for me because I've got two birthdays coming up and also Christmas as well. Where I'm going to find my money from, from a presence, I don't know. My mum's depressed because she's got no money. And she's depressed because the money it has to come through, but it doesn't come through. <laughs> She's waited for like a week or so and they haven't still give it up. Trying to find bloody money from everywhere. Can we get mummy some tissue please, Becca? Thank you. Oh Craig, it's Nigel. Listen, I've got some bikes here if you're interested in them. I've got one mountain bike that's about a 10 speed. I've got one small bike with um, a basket on the back. Interested? No. All oh, right, cheers. Thanks anyway. ta -ra. Nigel's driving ban has now been lifted. Once again, he's free to look for work as a bus driver. 
as you can see, it's like required for local transport companies. Duties will include driving over predetermined routes, keeping a time schedule, will involve handling cash, issuing tickets, must have a clean, appropriate driving licence. Well, I am legal to drive out. I'll at the police stations um, and verify I mean, that. It's actually, when you get your licence back, does that then mean that it's... It will be clean of yeah. points, but it will have an endorsement on it. Right. That shouldn't be a problem. Yeah, OK. And my dad's looking for a job. Hopefully he's going to get one. That'll be really good for us to be able to have loads of money. We can do what we want and we won't just be, like, like um, broke again. We'll just be like a rich person. It's worth based on nationwide £245 a week, plus allowances. Mm. Four pound an hour. It's terrible. Mm, it's not much for me. Sunday, it's my birthday, and for my birthday, um, my mom, when my mum gets some money, she's gonna take me to a shop down Northfield. It's got all the big fashionable trainers. It's got big heels and shoes that are massive for just a low price. And um, we're gonna go down there for my birthday, and I'm gonna get some trainers out of the Argus catalogue. Mm. There they are. Oh, yeah. <laughs> They've been low. Yeah. Oh, I didn't see these, Pay. Got gorgeous trainers on. If we don't get any money issued to us next week, I don't know what I'm going to do for your birthday. Yeah. Yeah. I can't see him sending us a, a gyro check. What's... How much is gyro check? I don't know. When you go, well, you know, can't you have something a bit cheaper or, you know, um, we'll look for an alternative of that. You know, that, that's when it, it does get to you, you know, because you know that in their heart of hearts they're craving out for this thing they've picked and you can't get it then. When I'm older, if I don't pass being a fit, I'm going to be an archaeologist because I love the bones and all that. And these two are my two bones I found. That one I found on Halloween, and that one I found. We boiled that one so it would go white. And this one, I haven't done nothing to it yet. All I've done is washed it. But all of them are my rocks and they're really cool. But in terms of size, they are tall. Medium. The one thing I'm really into at school is science. And that's the first thing you've got to do when you want to be a vet. Lately, Amy's been really naughty. She's been in detention loads of times, and I'm not saying that I'm on the teacher's side, but the teachers like do gang up on her. But she, she's the one that keeps back chatting them, and they want to teach her a lesson. I did not sit at table mm. first time at. We got a three to four off the same teacher there. Was half a lesson four. Cross lesson four. Cross. Cross PM registration. Cross level five. Because my mum was having a rough time, I felt horrible. <laughs> and I was all, always moody to go towards the teachers and back chatting at them. Um. Yeah. And I didn't do that. And a little bit there, Doug. I did that. <laughs> so it needs to be got off. I didn't do that. Mm -hmm. Amy. I had a great day, except from Miss Robertson's class, because, um, I really love on the table and she made me scrub the whole table, which I didn't do and I told her I didn't do it. Because if they make me do something that I didn't do, then I get angry and I, I give them lo lots of my mouth. You make me feel really, really crap, right? But you don't care because oh, I'm doing it back I to you. I thought the teachers didn't care that... Um, don't care that yeah, you're, well, you're yelling at them because they're not your mum or dad at the end of the day. They're just your teachers. You know what? They just pass it on. But they're going home to a nice house. What are you doing? You're coming home. You might be made to do all these jobs. You're being punished by being sent to your room. I'm getting very stressed over all this, Amy, and I can't cope with it. Sure, so you're not just hurting it. yourself, you're hurting me as well. You're dragging me down. I sat there today and I, I just couldn't handle anything. Are you listening? Yeah. Oh, I couldn't believe it. No, I felt like Mum and Dad didn't love me anymore. With me and my depression, 
I think I affect the kids, I really do, because I'm up and down. And if you're not stable yourself, how can you um, have stability in a family? As a punishment for her bad behaviour, Amy must do all her sister's chores for the next month. I thought that if I weren't naughty, my friends wouldn't like me. But my mum, she said to me, go ahead, be naughty, cos you'll only end up like me and the doll. I think that she should pack it all up because I don't like it because my mum's already stressed by all us like arguing all the time. Yeah, 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 that's all we do. Even I do it, but she's my sister and I love her. It's Sunday, December 10th. Amy is 12 today. Happy birthday to me. Happy birthday to me. Happy birthday to me. Don't get hit this. This is off. This is off. But anyway, it's my birthday and I gotta go. Bye. <laughs> Twelve today. <laughs> yeah, then. Come on, open it then. <laughs> no, you yeah, want to open it? Should I? I want to open it now. Twenty pounds. Oh. <laughs> no, kiss it to me. Thank you. <laughs> For a special granddaughter, that's a good one, Oh, oh yeah. We know you've played up, right, but it is your special day. We haven't got you what you wanted, but we've got you some presents, right? So even though you've been a bad girl. <laughs> OK, this one now. Ah, I know it's <laughs> No, I'm knickers. Oh, they're lovely. Oh, you got now. <laughs> <laughs> I know, yeah. Oh, thanks, Mum. Wicked. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like I'm loaded. I feel like I'm a millionaire. I'm going to go to take Sam to McDonald's and spend money on her and me. Obviously, I'm going to buy myself some shoes, nice clothes, because I, I ain't got really much nice clothes. And it feels like I've got loads of money and I can just spend it all on her and me. <laughs> Lovely. Should I try this up? I do. Oh, it's big, isn't it? Brilliant. Perfect. <laughs> 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 I can't believe I've just got them, Sammy. Is it real? Have yeah. I just bought them? Are you sure? I've just bought them. But today, I bought this top, these trousers, these shoes, and it has been wicked, but I'm really looking forward to Christmas. It doesn't matter if my mum doesn't buy me nothing, I don't care. Because I know I know that she hasn't got much money, but at least we're gonna have a happy day. It's now only 14 days to Christmas, and Maxine and Nigel still haven't sorted out their money with Social Security. The lady just said in there, all it takes is for them to put the details of what we wrote on the form onto the computer, and they haven't done it yet, and that was from like last week. So they've put like a family of eight in jeopardy just because somebody can't be bothered to put our information on the um, computer. So now we, we don't know when we're going to get paid. We can't go shopping, we can't do anything until they've sorted the money out. I do tell her off when she rings up, Mum. Oh, can I borrow a tenner this week? I'm till Monday, something to get me through till the next day. But she will struggle to pay me back. I feel as though I'm doing my duty for Maxine and uh, my grandchildren. Bring your catalogue. Yes. 
I'm going to see if I can order a hamper out of there, because I'm going to go Christmas shopping. <laughs> Yeah, that's a good idea, actually. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. And it'd get here before Christmas. Yeah. yeah. And then I could pay for it in, in July. July. All right, then. Yeah. Yeah, I think I'll go for that one. Can you afford that one? With drinks, 199.99. 3.74 a week. But I ain't got to worry about that till next no. year, so... Don't worry. I should hear something, you know, soon, so... Don't, don't worry. Still waiting for my family aunts to come back as well, so... Don't worry. OK. <sighs> Christmas time, most of the time I, I rely heavily on catalogues um, through my mum. No, if that I'll do it. No, I'll do something for you. Because obviously I, won't, I can't get one. This house is blacklisted. Mm. Right mess. And at least with this way, having this hamper out of the catalogue means that we know we're guaranteed some food of some sort. Mm. You know, at least the kids can have some sort of a decent Christmas, you know, even if the DSS mess up. We're on holiday. When we come back, Mum says a uh, holiday was part of our Christmas present. Cause it is a big holiday. It's a lot of money to pay just to stay there for two weeks. My mum has to pay for it now. Maxine borrowed three hundred pounds to pay for the girls' caravan holiday in Western oh, yeah. Super Mare. Right. Yeah. Just get me book. <sighs> I ain't got the money to give her. I'm gonna do. It. How much, we, how much are we going to give her? 29. Oh. No, 27. Oh. I could give her a bit, couldn't I? Yeah, here I've got some in my pocket. Are you sure, Matt? Yeah. Got to, keep, from, got to keep the walls away from the door. I mm. feel awful, keep doing this all the time. Else. Is it all right if I only pay the 20 today? After 54 weekly repayments, that £300 holiday will have cost £486. Okie doke, that's lovely. Have a nice Christmas. Bye. 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 I really, really, really want a Texas. Like the advert of it, but has my mum got enough money to buy it? Or my dad? <sighs> or me and my dad? I don't know. Has anybody, anyone in my family got enough to buy it? I just really, really, really want it. Looks like, say, £5 this weekend if you spend £600. <laughs> Hope you have a happy Christmas, a lovely dinner, lovely pudding, and I wish you have a lovely, 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 oh, million, all the numbers in the world, lovely. Don't. Because we're not having a good, very good time in this house. December 20th. Nigel is still without a job, and the gyro check still hasn't come. It's only five days to Christmas. Instead of presents, my mum's going to get me some food out of the catalogue. Yeah, my mum's going to get loads and loads of food. It's just a whole page of it, loads of food. It's just getting ridiculous. <laughs> no, no, don't touch. No, back up. It's the spoiling things, you know, the things that we don't normally have. And that's what makes Christmas at the end of the day, just to see the kids' faces light up when they get something they're not used to. It's hard. Oh, these are my favourites. Say bye. No. <laughs> Hello, me again. Yesterday, yeah, <clears throat> my mum got a cheque for um, £345.52. I mean, my mum's so excited. And I says, um, 
is that what we're going to be getting today? <laughs> and she went, yeah, yeah. And we was like, I said, today? And Nigel went, today? <laughs> and she went, yeah. It was a big relief. I nearly passed out. I had to go outside, I did. <laughs> Didn't I? I was in the right state. We knew it wasn't guaranteed, the money. We knew it was owed to us, but it wasn't guaranteed to get it. No, thank you. I mean, that woman that day at the doll, she worked wonders. <laughs> As a Christmas present to themselves, Maxine and Nigel are spending £50 to redeem their wedding rings from the local pawn shop. Hello. Yeah. Oh, thank you. Come to redeem these, please. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. That's your wedding bands. That's your diamond cluster. And that's your shaped wedding. Yeah. Okay. Do you want them back in there? No. Yeah, no, no problem. Yeah. It's just nice to see Nigel yeah. with his on his hand. We'll be in there Monday morning, don't you worry? Because <laughs> he's getting help and he's really, really trying. You know, he's being absolutely I one at the moment. <laughs> Come on, <Come> on. <laughs> just signifies such a lot to me. It's sort of like togetherness. It makes me feel complete. At the end of the day, my mum said it doesn't matter if she doesn't get presents. All she said is to give our family love and care and to not be horrible and nasty and all attitude. Eh? Just to give them a lot of love and that's their, pre that's their Christmas present. Because love is better than a present. For dad, I mean, just got to sit there and eat You want to? Who's this? It's where your imagination comes into it. Look how rolling glue. Ah. Hey. In Queen's speech. No. Oh no. Uh -huh. I understand the whole family. It's the same old, old rubbish over and over again every year. The hypocrites, a lot of them. January 6th. A new year dawns for Kelly and her sisters. Christmas is over and when it was Christmas we had loads of food, but we've still got food left from Christmas, but uh, it's nearly all gone. We've got a Christmas pod, which my mum lost the box to um, cook it with. And then the freezer's only got like peas and a sausage and orange cubes and that's it. And the fridge has got butter, jam, spaghetti, all that stuff. Mum, what's that? <laughs> and then there's a lot of socks. And a lot Jam. Mum, this has been here. Aidies. Smell it, Mum. 
chips. Are you OK? Oh, watch, I'll take, put it in the bin. No, I wouldn't chance that. Well. Where is the turkey? One's chicken and ham. And the other one's turkey roll. Where? I don't know. <laughs> oh, Mom! <laughs> if you did pick out some more, your bright shirt. Bussy. It's Sunday's day and Sunday's my best day because I always get to um, have Sunday dinner and I love having Sunday dinner and no, normally on Sundays we get puddings and it's my best day. <laughs> Yeah, I need to get these Get it over the top. Oh, a lovely decoration. Oh. Yeah, we're going to stay here for a lovely day. Oh, look at that. We're really getting on my nerves. 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 We've been taking trimmings down. What's the matter with you? She wants her own room. We all want her own stuff. No, I'd rather... Sleep the cat in the shed if you want to. I'd rather. I'm going to get on my nerves. Can I put that in there? Actually, it used to get on in the years gone by. They used to have to share the bed. Oh, yeah. <laughs> the top and tile. Let me drive a bed then. Where? I know it's not the 1900s or something, but you know, we've got a big family, so you have to put up with it, I'm afraid. We're not going to give you effort an eight bedroom house. Just say so you've got to be realistic about things. Mm, typical teenager. Everybody's sort of getting to each other because of the way we're living. That, you know, everybody's, you can feel the tensions building up between us all, you know, and it's like a time bomb. And something's going to blow, you know, sooner or later. I'm not good, am I, Let me check you What have you done to this jacket? It's tight. What? And I've just um, tucked them down there. I've just chucked them in the washing. Now you put them on the finger again. Go downstairs and you can pull it in the washing. Don't start. Uh, I was just doing my bed. No, she's because you're throwing it all on the bed. floor, that's why. She's trying to tidy the room and you're messing it up. Yeah, but she, as you said, she's uh, not I know. I'm not listening to your butts. You're in enough trouble. Kids, they seem resilient to things, but then you can see it coming out in them through different ways. They seem to be reacting to things whereas they wouldn't react any another time. When we found fungus in the Jade McKelly's room, that was just so shocked and stunned. <laughs> he was sort of looking at me as if to say, well, why have we got to live like this, man? Mm. You know, this isn't fair. If it was still Christmas, then I really, really, really want a new house. I feel like crying because of this, because it's horrible and it's just not good for us. We need a four bedroom and five bedroom house and I really need it because um, we want to just live our life like everybody else is but some people out there haven't got a house even like us. Our family is getting better and better every day but the house ain't. The house isn't just falling apart, it's just getting worse. When I first moved into this house, <clears throat> believe it or not, I was quite, um, not house proud, but I did my jobs. I used to do the kids' rooms. Now, I just shut the door. You're just fighting a losing battle. Everything that we've sort of tried to struggle to get together, you know, this house is sort of destroying with the mould and the wet. just feel awful in this house. When I lie down and put my head down on the pillow, I'm always getting wet and my pillow always smells when it's down there. So um, my mum and dad have decided that they're gonna um, move me into Becca's bed so I don't get all my pillows wet and me wet. All the walls are so in our room, so. That bed that I was sleeping on when all my pillow got wet, that bed's been taken down today. And if I sleep in Becca's bed, it's going to be really good because nothing's going to happen to me or not get my hair wet, pillow. 
because Beck has got a bunk bed and Kelly sleeps at top big rock button and then I sleep with Becca and I hope it's going to be really good in there. The house puts a lot of pressure on both of us and it does worry me that Nigel will slip up because of the pressures that he's under being in here. Because of being in the same room with Lauren as well, she's interrupting my sleep every night. So me and Nigel are not getting that closeness together of a night time. Um, so even me and him haven't got a proper relationship at the moment. But as it stands at the moment, he's doing well under the circumstances. Um, but it does, it does worry me that, you know, pressures of not living a normal life can make you revert back. Demolition of the estate is scheduled for April and some families have already been rehoused. Maxine and Nigel are keen to find out when it will be their turn. Well, we went down to council. Basically, they said, if you want a four bedroom house, you're gonna have to wait for it. And they told us we could be waiting for another 12 months again. Didn't care at all. And she stood there pointing a finger at me, telling me I can't have, I can't have, I can't have. Yeah. Well, me in, that, in the way I feel, it just wasn't the right thing to do. Because I really got my back up and I, I, I did move off at her. I probably shouldn't have said a few things that I said, but, yeah. you know, I didn't expect to get that sort of treatment. And, it, it, you know, he did overreact, as in um, being nasty, but, I mean, if they hadn't spoke to him like that, he would not have reacted like that, mm -hmm. you know. I mean, he, he said a few things he shouldn't have said, and, you know, we, we sort of stormed out. And as a result of that, we've got a caution letter mm -hmm. telling us that um, if he does it again, then basically we're, they'll take further action against us. So they just don't want to know. They made us feel worthless people. Just go back to your estate and rot. We'll probably be the last people to get out now anyway because of my outburst down the council. You know, they'll probably look at me now and think, oh, yeah, back of the queue. But if that's what they say, then that's what they say. But at the end of the day, I'm sitting there laughing because I'm the one that's stuck in the house. At the end of the day, they can't throw me out. Mm. So at the end of that, I'll get what I want for my family. And if I don't like it, then that's tough. She's getting worse, Nigel. Nigel, just take it off, mate. Just looks terrible, doesn't it? There's more of these My life could be worse than it is now, but um, it's OK. We'll have to just live in this house until we get a new one. And um, we'll just have to just be calm and just just go with it, go with the people, that's what they'll say, but we'll get through it one day. <gasps> Becca, come off, please, cos it's all dirty. Becca, come over here, please. <laughs> I think my mum's done really well, and I, I'll respect her, cos she's tried her best to get us to a house it's not her fault that um, she couldn't find a perfect house, but she says to us she's really going to try again to try and get us a house. She's going to try and find one, and if she finds one, then she's going to tell us. So, um, if she finds one, hooray! <laughs> we'll just go, woohoo, get our stuff that's removed, <laughs> get it into the van, and we'll be gone. Anyway, that's it. That's my family and me. I've got a secret, I cannot keep it It's just a whisper of a distant memory Just a dream, or so it seems Take me back to the place I'd rather be You left a fire in my eyes I break up the darker skies I'm giving up, I'm letting go I find my way, so take me back Back to my Latina, find my love, my Dolce Vina. Show me where I need to go. Donde está mi chico Latino?